What's up everyone? So today I'm going to show you how I took notes for my biochemistry courses. So I took two semesters of biochem, biochem one and biochem two, that were taught by different professors and the note taking strategies are kind of different for both. So we'll go through both of them and it'll just give you an idea of how you can use the iPad to take notes digitally in class. So the note taking app that I use is Notability. Of course, it's my favorite one. And we'll start with Biochemistry 1. So Biochemistry 1 was a very PowerPoint heavy class and the slides were provided by the professor. So you were basically following along with the slides as she lectured with PowerPoint the whole semester. Now, for classes like this, what I like to do is I like to import the PowerPoint slides into Notability like I've done here. And then I like to write directly on the slides. Now, I know some people prefer writing on PowerPoint slides where they have the three bars on the side so you can take notes. I personally hate that. What I like to do is write directly on these big slides because when you import them into Notability or any note taking app that you choose, you can see that you have a lot of room to work with. There's a lot of free space here and here where you can write plenty of notes if you need to. I didn't write them in, on the slide, but there's a lot of space right here as it is. Plus there's already a lot of information on the slide as well. So the only thing you really need to be writing are facts that explain something further if you didn't understand it or equations or some other details that aren't necessarily on the slide. But most of the time, if you are in a PowerPoint heavy course, the most of the information is going to be on the slide anyway and the blanks that you have to fill in are going to be verbally said by your professor. So you should either rewatch the lecture in that case to pick up on those cues or write them on the side of the slide here. And so most of my note taking here involves highlighting and annotating and that's about it. So when you're in class, what you should do or what I like to do is just follow along with the slides given here and just annotate on the sides if you need to or highlight on whatever needs to be highlighted or organize them in certain ways that make it easier for you to go back and look at. Now, a lot of people hate PowerPoint lectures. I actually really like PowerPoint lectures because it's all the information is already provided to you. You can just go back and you just have to organize it basically. One of the issues people find, I think with PowerPoint or is organization because there's just so much content and there's so many slides, it's hard to organize what you have. So while I recommend here, it's really simple. You're just writing on the slides in class. What you should do afterwards is organize all the material in study guides. And I actually do that on Microsoft Word. So for example, here you can see that I made a study guide for lipids and membranes for my first semester of biochemistry to just organize all the main topics so that I have a clear idea of what we were talking about. You can worry about the details later. And what's also really nice about this is I've actually copy and pasted some of these images that she provided for us into my study guide and I even drew some of these structures myself so I could practice drawing and have a nice reference for myself to go back and use later. Now, second semester biochemistry was taught by a different professor and the style of the course was structured a little bit differently as well. So this was a lot of chalk talk and a few PowerPoint slides mixed in. This can be a difficult thing to do without digital note taking because you're gonna have a packet of slides that the professor gives you every day and you're going to have a notebook separate that's going to have all the chalk talk notes that the professor writes on the board. So you basically have to manage two different sets of notes separately. But if you are taking notes digitally, you can combine all of them into one note. So let me show you what that means. So here we have a note of complex one in the electron transport chain. So this, this was printed out and given to us and also uploaded digitally. So I didn't, I didn't use any of the printouts. I just up, took the digital versions and imported them into Notability here. And what you can see here is that I've had a lot of annotations. Most of these annotations were what my professor was saying verbally, and I wrote them down as he was talking so that I could have them for reference on the slide because there's a lot of information in his PowerPoint slides that are given verbally rather than written on the slides itself. So we have a lot of PowerPoint slides here, but then we also have a lot of chalk talk. So this is, com this is complex four where we're looking at the oxidation reduction reaction that's going on here. And then whenever he jumped to the slides in the lecture, I wrote a note that said see slide five. I could go back and reference the fifth slide in the presentation. So you can see there was actually a whole bunch of chalk talk written here as well that I put. And then after that, we went back to PowerPoint. So you see, I organized this in the manner that we 
went through it in lecture. So we started out with PowerPoint, then in the middle of the lecture, he started writing on the board, then we jumped back to PowerPoint when we were talking about the glycerol 3 phosphate shuttle and then ended the lecture. One thing I did to keep myself organized with these notes is highlighting headings for new topics so that I could go back and basically see the big picture of everything we were going through. Now, obviously you can highlight your headings in your notes without an iPad and without digital note taking, but the benefit of digital note taking is that you can also rearrange things to make them look and flow nicer in your notes. And you can also use any colors you want without having to carry a whole bunch of highlighters with you. And you can also write certain important notes in red like I do here without having to carry different colored pens with you as well. So it just, you have a wider, you have a greater arsenal with digital note taking in a more compact form factor and you can rearrange your notes, undo notes, basically rewrite things without losing anything as well. So the way I would recommend doing this, now you might've noticed my notes looked pretty neat in, in that situation. They look pretty organized and it's not actually this organized in class itself. So what I would do is in lecture is I would just write everything on the board and I wouldn't annotate anything on the slides. So I would just listen to what he was saying about the slides and I would just take it in. I wouldn't write anything down. Then I would go back and I would rewatch the lecture and that's when I would organize everything in the proper manner so that it follows exactly what we did in the lecture. So I would rewrite this to make it look neater. This is rewritten already, but this was not what it looked like when I was in class. It looked really messy beforehand. And then I would delete the old note that I took in class after I'd rewritten everything so that I only had the nice looking notes to go back to study from. Then at the same time, whenever he was verbally talking about like the alanine cycle, for example, I would listen and then write down the key points he was saying on the slide directly because I hadn't done it in class. I was just listening and trying to understand the concept first. Now, this is not a strategy that will work for everyone. A lot of my friends hate that I do this at a rewatch lectures, but it's a really tried and true strategy for me and it really helps me do really well in, in classes. So this is something that I've been doing since freshman year and it's helped me and I'm a senior now to help me all the way till now. So I, if you have the inclination, this is basically studying. This is how I study. And it's been a, a really effective method for me to study because I need to go back and listen to get into the mindset of the professor to see what they're specifically wanting you to get from these slides for me to understand what the content is that needs to be, for me to understand what content needs to be understood. The way your professor teaches is usually really good. The problem I think is people, when you're listening the first time, it's almost impossible to catch everything that they're saying. So I really do recommend going back, listening to what they're saying, and things will generally make a lot more sense. It's basically reviewing your notes. So you can see here, I've written any annotations I made, I put in boxes here that I think are really important. And then I clarified some structures on here as well that he pointed out in class. And in this, instance, he was telling us the concentration of glycogen in the cell, and he gives us some hypotheticals. So if glycogen is sort of glucose, glucose concentration would be 400 millimolar, but glycogen concentration is only 0.1 micromolar. So facts like that, that I think are interesting and important to know about metabolism. Now, remember I said that with my other biochemistry notes, I had made study guides afterward. In this instance, it doesn't seem like you really need to make a study guide because if you do the method I've used, everything is organized really nicely for you. The thing is, I think it's always important to make study guides because as the semester progresses and after each exam, the amount of material you have learned increases. And so it can be difficult to remember what you needed to know for exam one versus exam two, and eventually what you'll need to know all of it for the final. So I did make study guides for this class as well. And again, I did it on Microsoft Word. And you can see here again, I used some of my handwritten notes to copy and paste into the Word document for my study guide. And it's mainly things, this is gonna be really personal for you if you're doing this. It should be things that you are personally struggling with. So the overview of the electron transport chain, I always wanted this to be easily available for me to look at for reference instead of digging through all my notes and notability and remembering what lecture that was from. So I just copy and pasted it in this Word document. So I just have a really small study guide. It's not that long and I could easily reference all the key aspects that were personally, that were hard for me to remember. And then there were certain facts here that I forgot and that I thought were important. So I typed those up as well. 
And then there were certain broad concepts that we talked about over different lectures that I just wanted to compile in one place so that it was easy to reference. So for example, there were a few reasons he gave us, or I guess only a couple, of why exercise may be beneficial. And these are kind of interesting reasons about UCP and SODs thought to increase during exercise. And then there was also a couple of react reactive oxygen species defense mechanisms we went through and they were over separate lectures. So I compiled them all into here so that I could go back and recall what the three different defense mechanisms we learned about were. So I think making a study guide is still very helpful, but when you're in class and taking notes in this sort of environment, you should definitely import the PowerPoint slides into your notability and then you can take notes on the slides and then add your own pages as well. So this is just a brief look of how I took notes for biochemistry. There are two different versions, basically. One was strictly PowerPoint, one was a PowerPoint shock talk mix. Let me know what you guys think of this. Of course, you don't have to use Notability. You can use any note-taking app of your choice, but I hope this was a little bit helpful to see, and I will see you in the next one.